Hi there and welcome back. So let's move to tutorial nine. So this is a classical validation case in turbulence modeling, the, the flat plate. So I'm not going to, to give you geometry anything. You can reproduce easily this geometry. So here you have the initial pro problem definition. So we're going to run an array of number 10 million and we're going to sample data here. We have some data available that you will be able to download in the, in the website and we can compare friction coefficient, but also velocity profile. So here you have a few references. Okay. So there is plenty, there's a lot of data to validate, to validate this case for different Reynolds numbers, by the way. So in testing 10 million, there is 6 million, 5 million, 3 million, also different Mac number, and also with uh, compressibility fed and heated plate. Okay, so here we're going to test the simplest case, okay, incompressible isotherma. So this is the geometry, the meshes, we have two meshes, a wall resolvent and a wall modeling. So see that clearly, you can see here that this is the wall resolvent, wall modeling, and see this is the price that you pay to resolve the, the boundary layer, very fine meshes. And here, just here, you are concentrating probably 50% of the meshes just in this layer. By the way, it's also important the stream, the stream wise uh, refinement. In this case, we are not taking into account that, but if you want to, to do scale resolving simulations, you should also uh, refine in this direction accordingly. Uh, so look at here, we have a comparison between the two meshes. So first, look at the wall modeling approach. So see that here, the wall modeling, what it's doing in the first center, okay, you are using the, the, the log low the lock low and somehow you are you are creating a bridge between the, the information at the wall and also in the cell center and see that this is equivalent to just molding all, all the cells. So clearly here you can see what is the difference between both of them. So in the wall modeling, look at that the turbulent kinetic energy here with it by definition should, should be zero. But as we have this bond wall function, we have a finite volume here. And instead in the wall resolvent, see that the volume is zero and it grows. Okay. And the same for the dissipation. So in this case, it's much, much higher the dissipation. Okay. And so on, we can check then, uh, the total viscosity and this is important. Okay. But because even though that we have different value for these quantities and we know that turbulent viscosity is computing for, for, from this value, see that what we have here is very similar. Okay. By the way, remember that the, the values are computed at the cell center and what you see here, okay. Is the, it is the interpolation. Okay. Is this both quantity. So this is the wall modeling. I will resolve and I see that both of them, they have similar values of turbulent viscosity. Okay, uh, here we compare the uh, the flat plate. What you see here, the flat plate is a white plus. So see that the white plus in this one is relatively large, more more than thirty, less than one hundred. Here it is. I don't recall, but it's less than one, probably zero point zero five, zero one. Very low value. Okay, and this plane in the back surface, you see velocity is not clear to see, but any case. So I see the difference between two meshes. Remember that you can compute the white plus at all slip walls. Uh, no, no, no slip walls, sorry. And now we go to the proper validation. Okay, so see that here we're computing the velocity profile. So this is u and y, the distance normal from, from the wall to the first cell center. Okay, so this is dimensional. Okay, and see that you have this velocity profile and see the difference. Okay, each circle that you see here represents a cell center. And see that this cell center here, okay, you put it here. Okay, it's kind of modeling all these cell centers that you have here in the wall resolving mesh. Here we have the same, but instead of the distance uh, normal to the wall, we have the Y plus, okay, in wall distance units. And see the same that very close to the wall, okay, you have here. This one is kind of modeling all the cells that you have here. So also we can look at the, uh, the profile. So it is important, but it's the, when doing the mesh that you need to put enough cells to resolve your profiles. Okay. Velocity profiles are turbulence quantity. So see here that you are resolving well, these profiles instead, as you put a, a larger mesh, you will start to see that there is a difference between the profiles. Okay. So the idea also when generating meshes, put enough cells that you need to resolve the profiles talking about the wall modeling. Okay. So see in this case, we have about 10 cells in the whole boundary layer that are enough to resolve 
well your profiles and see here that in this case we have in y plus units here we have production and dissipation okay of the turbulent kinetic energy and see that in the world resolvent as expected when you go to the viscous layer kk the production is zero and then dissipation ta takes a finite value okay it should be it should for very very fine measures it should be zero here is here you you have a finite value remember the definition is the derivative of normal to the wall so it will take a uh, a finite value but see that you have here these profiles and see that it peaks somewhere in the buffer layer or somewhere between more than 10 and can be up to 100 okay but see that it have a peak here instead when you put the wall model see that everything below this first cell center has been modeled okay so we are creating a bridge okay between the wall information and the first cell center and see that pretty much managed to to get a a good agreement so see that there is some difference but then when you start to go to the uh, far from the wall now to the core of the flow see that it, it start to match so this is the idea okay by putting a wall function okay you are saving all the cells that you need to put here here but also you have good accuracy these wall functions are very reliable however try to avoid then is you have separation okay if you have many separate uh, massive separations they are not very reliable be careful then we do the classical validation okay so we have the non-dimensional velocity profile and see here that the circles here this one the red one represents the wall result and i see that you go very 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 deep into the viscous layer and resolve very well your source your viscous layer then you do the blending and then the logarithmic region okay so I see here that we have some difference between your correlations and also these parallel matters okay so this this is why we try to avoid this one because we don't know precisely how to correlate there so there might there might be some deviation for from measurements or what we know there instead in the viscous layer is very precise and also in the logarithmic region is also very precise and see that now we compare also with the uh, wall model and see that probably clearly we see this is the first cell center and see that this first cell using by using the wall model you are saving all these cells and cell, cell centers and see that this is very accurate as well okay there are slight differences as you go, let's say, into the milli into millimeters there as you've seen in, but it's very, very accurate. Okay, so here you have here the defect region, and then when it goes like this, it's, it's just the fat of the free stream. Okay, you are outside of the boundary layer. So somehow also you can measure now your boundary layer by looking at this. So here it's just the same boundary layer. Then we can also look at the shear stresses. So here we look at all the, uh, the, the turbulent laminar and total shear stresses. And here we're looking in dimension and dimensional units. Okay, so this is the distant normal from the wall to first cells to this to the cells and see here that the behavior that we have okay so very close to the wall probably is difficult to see the all the effects that you have is the laminar stresses okay very very close the viscous layer and see that the turbulent stresses are very small and then when you go far and you start to go far from the walls okay the the turbulent stress is killing and that is the main contribution then you have the total here and pretty much this is a nice also way to validate cases okay and then here probably easy to to, to appreciate we have in y plus units logarithmic uh, scale the same shear stresses and see here that in the viscous in 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 the viscous layer see that the turbulence stresses basically are zero okay then it start to kill in something about two or three and then outside the contribution of the of the turbulent stresses is the one that dominates and the viscous stresses okay you have a contribution probably up to a maximum contribution up to probably two or three and then start to reduce okay so again another way to to validate uh your your results so remember that you shouldn't have any any tor uh, turbulent shear, shear stresses in your viscous layer at least in values close to to two or one you shouldn't have you see you kind of proceed then you are going to have that slowly increasing okay uh, and then it reach the buffer layer and then it starts to grow fast here reaching a peak something about 200 
okay and then it will reduce okay when you are in this string where you don't have any any fluctuation okay mm -hmm. by the way not necessarily this peak that you have in internal viscosity not necessarily will correspond to the same peak that you have in production and dissipation of TKA or turning kinetic energy that you see here. So not necessarily, okay? So this is all, okay? You will find it in the folder in here. You, you, uh, uh, sorry, uh, should be, 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 be here. So here you will have, we have two cases, 2D and 3D. We're going to work in the, with the 3D. The 2D, the 2D is the same stuff, but in this, I like to do, as I mentioned, another tutorial, I like to do this one because it's easier to visualize white plots and these quantities in the, in the surfaces, okay? But it, it, it is equivalent to a 2D. Uh, so there you will find the cases, you will have the meshes, okay, so you will have a mesh high re, low re, and also the settings to see to the settings, okay, if you are not using the 21, you can read the, uh, the mesh in format NSH and then you have the setting to set up your, your case. Also, we'll add the Python scripts. Okay, you will have the Python script to do the automatic post-processing. So that's all for this case. Thank you for your attention and see you in another video. Bye.